Hello everyone, I'm Scott Rothschild, the Communications Editor at the Kansas Association of School Boards, and I'm joined today with Mark Tallman, who is the Associate Executive Director of Educational Advocacy. And today we're going to talk about some really amazing uh, news about student success in the Dodge City School District. Okay, so Mark, uh, this is about uh, some success that we uh, found out about the Dodge City School District, and I think it started with a slide that Kansas Education Commissioner Randy Watson uh, showed the State Board of Education about uh, what is called post-secondary success at the Dodge City District. Can you kind of explain what that slide showed and why it is important? Well, post-secondary success, or I guess if we want to be technical, the post-secondary effective rate is a statistic that is unique to Kansas. It's something that was developed as part of the Kansans Can uh, vision that the State Board has put in place. But what it really means is this. What percentage of a graduating class of students has actually graduated and then has gone on to what's called post-secondary success in the first two years, which is either completing some type of post-secretary credential, in other words, that could be a te technical certificate, a two-year degree, or is still enrolled in such a program. And the idea behind this is to say statistics pretty much indicate that if you are continuously enrolled for two years after graduation, your chances of finishing a program are pretty good, much, much higher than average. And of course, if you've already received a credential, that's important because there's such a strong correlation between increased earning, less poverty, you know, less unemployment. All these things are really associated with getting some credential beyond just a high school diploma, and certainly high school diploma moves you ahead of where you'd be without having that. We've calculated this statistic with a goal, a very ambitious goal, of trying to get to 75% of kids at that level. We're not near at that level. In fact, statewide, we're, we're, not, we're not even halfway to that level. Although, again, while no other state does something like this, if you kind of look at other measures, Kansas ranks pretty well not where we want to be. What's surprising, or what was so striking about this statistic, is Dodge City in many ways has a lot of things which we can talk about stacked against this. But over the last you know, seven or eight years, really since we started collecting data, they've moved from being one of the lower performing districts in the state to increasing that, getting well above where their prediction would be. So the commissioner shared this saying, here's some great news. I wanted to find out, well, what were they doing which is apparently really boosting success in a district with a lot of challenges. So, so to find out why that uh, significant increase in the post-secondary rate was occurring, you went down to Dodge City, you talked to a bunch of people. Uh, what, what, what did you find out? Well, I want to, first of all, just thank the people for the time they gave me. I really had two meetings, and I don't know who was maybe teaching the kids at Dodge City High School that morning because uh, I was in a room full of the principal, assistant principal, counselors, instructional coaches. I guess most of the teachers were still teaching, but a lot of people who, d who did this work talked about what the high school was doing, and then I met with folks from the district office, superintendent, other central office folks, and a member of the school board, in fact, a, a leader within KSB, Ryan Asmus, who is a, a longtime school board member who had some perspectives, and really just tried to find out what's going on. And I guess what I'm gonna, the top level summary I'd make is this, number one, they set out to do something different. In other words, what they talked about over and over was, we knew to achieve this goal, we had to do some different things, so they put in place a plan to do it. Now, what was surprising is they said they had no idea they'd gotten these results <laughs> until the commissioner told them, because this is data which really the State Department collects and then sends back out. But they said everything we're doing in our plan was designed to have this effect, and we're seeing it. Second thing is they absolutely talked about the importance of having the resources to do it. Dodge City was one of the plaintiff districts in the Gannon case and the Montoy case, and they talked over and over again. The higher base, the additional waiting funding allowed them to hire people to do some of those different things that, that, that they talked about. And I think the final thing they would all say is, and this is what I heard over and over, 
they saw themselves as being advocates for their students and their families. A district with very high poverty, a district with tremendous challenges of immigration and, and transient student populations and all of those to say, we need to give our, our students and their families, you know, many of whom, first generations in America, for whom, you know, a job at the, at the packing plant, which is, is a great job and a great step forward, but that's all they know. So to talk about why you need to think about why more education is important when, you're, when your family is kind of already living the immigrant version of the American dream, to, to think beyond that, um, they really see that as their intentional role. So those are the top, the, those were the kinds of themes I heard over and over. And just to step back for a second, we're talking about these tremendous gains, but can you, can you explain uh, from the, the, the slide that was shown, showed 2015 to 2022, can you just kind of explain uh, what the increase was? So what the, what the data that they looked at showed is that the increase went from, and, and these, are, these are a little bit approximations because as they say, some of this is data collection. The other thing that would make this is a little complicated is the way the store, state reports it is to show uh, it's a, it's a, a multi-year average. So each year does not show the change in a single year, but the change in a rolling average. But essentially, they went from somewhere in the 20% range to about the 40% range. Now again, that's, that's still below even the state average, but given their population and given the fact that while the state has improved, it, hadn't, it hasn't improved at nearly that rate. That's what was so surprising. It sounds like there was a tremendous collaboration of different segments of the community down there with the education community. Uh, do you think that was part of the reason for this uh, successful uh, improvement? You know, absolutely, and that's something, again, they stressed over and over. The school district working with first the local community college, and they, and they really credited the fact that while the district was trying to do this, Dodge City Community College really stepped up their effort to partner in providing these, a couple things. Number one, dual enrollment or concurrent enrollment, whatever you want to say, allowing kids to get credit while still in high school. Really, the representative of the community college said, our goal is to let every program be something that a student can start in high school if it works for them. And second, better career planning to be able to, uh, if, if, if you're not starting in high school, that you're ready to seamlessly move in to that kind of environment. And they, and they admit that's a real advantage because they've got a community college right there, very close to the high school. They don't have a four-year. In fact, they point out they're the only quadrant of the state that doesn't have a four-year university. So they've got some advantages of location in one sense. They've got some challenges in another sense. The second thing they talked about was just a much greater connection with the business community. Um, uh, the phrase that one of them used is, we brought people in, we take people out. And so they've got a person at the high school who's a, a big part of their job is to arranging every week bringing in representatives from business, representatives from employers, representatives from different industries and different professions to talk to students about what might this mean, what will it take to get you prepared to, to recognize this could be a career path. Uh, and then sending kids out to field trips and work study experiences, um, a, a much stronger you know, home visits, working with, with parents, but at the same time, more opportunities to bring parents and families in. They talked about the role of having uh, uh, a more deliberate senior year, a checklist really, month by month. What do you need to do to be preparing to graduate and move on for students who in many cases their, their parents have not graduated from high school, certainly may not have any post-secondary instruction. The point was, if you're going to change that, you have to do something very different. They also strongly mentioned cooperation with the city, the county, local chamber of commerce, um, so that there's really a sense, and certainly the sense I got there, was a very strong sense of the whole community pulling together. One of the things they point out is that Dodge City has a very low unemployment rate, like we hear all over the state, businesses struggling to find employees, particularly find skilled employees. And so, you know, what impressed me was there didn't seem to be a lot of, 
you know, blaming. <laughs> it was more, how do we all work together to solve this problem? And that's another thing over and over I heard from the school people that, that how positive they were, that partnership between the city, the county, the college, the school district, and the business community um, was, was really behind a lot of this. And, and something that you, I just got a sense, again, in my time there, of a, of a community that is really trying to work forward positive we're working together in a very positive way I mean it just sounds amazing what can what can happen when everyone is kind of working together right. instead of against one another right. you you talked about this a little bit about how important this post-secondary rate statistic is and to me it kind of seems like it's it's measuring the kids who are not idling they're on a path towards something uh, whether that's a degree right. or a certificate or something like that I mean, can you kind of explain maybe again why that is so important, both for an individual, uh, a young person, and, and why it's important for the, the state of Kansas as a whole? Well, individually, and there's a chart that you can probably access if you go to our website or something that uh, I, we didn't create that essentially shows you each level of education, both nationally and in Kansas. Um, the, the average earning of that individual from a high school, not finishing high school to completing high school, several thousand dollars. Completing high school, moving on to a two-year degree or technical certificate, another multiple thousand dollars. Moving on to a bachelor's degree. Really, by the time you get to a bachelor's degree, the difference between a, a graduating only or a dropout, you've tended to double your income. Maybe even more important, although in this time of high unemployment, there, there, are, there are a lot of jobs out there. I think we'd all agree with that. But at least over the past decade, there's really been a shift of saying most of the new jobs added in the economy have required some additional level skill. So the more educated you are based on that educational attainment, the lower the poverty rate, the lower the unemployment rate. And this, do, and, th and this is really just looking at things like earnings. It doesn't even get into a lot of other health care factors, your ability to have a retirement plan, access to, to, to health insurance. All of these things are kind of on top of that that are so critical. But the same thing is also true from the viewpoint of employers. Something we hear over and over is this sense of kids not having the skills they need. Now, some of that are paper credentials, and you do hear that. We, we, need, more, we need more nurses, or we need more you know, engineers, we, we need, certainly teachers is another area. But you also frequently hear the idea that you know, some of the kids we're getting don't have workplace skills that maybe they want. That's why part of this plan is also about saying that preparation, if it can involve some experience on the job, if it could involve an internship, it could involve something where you also uh, begin to learn and pick up those other skills that employers are looking for. That again really implies you have to have that partnership so the school system is kind of hearing what the business community is saying, hearing what employers want, and then employers literally be able to come in and talk to kids about why that's important. But again, that, that's what sounded like to me those strong lines of communication were really important out there. Um, you also talk about another reason why it's important to the state. Again, quite frankly, if you simply look at the, the sort of economic health of the state, who are the states that are growing? Who are the states with low unemployment? They tend to be better educated states because that's where the jobs are and that's where the money is to some extent. I always want to make clear, because this is something the Commissioner of Analyst talks about, this is not saying everyone needs a four-year degree. Uh, that's not the case at all, but to a very large extent, people will need some skill other than a high school diploma and a set of competencies. How do you solve problems? How do you work with other people? Do you, you, you show up on time, you self-regulate, that we don't really give out grades for, but are important kind of part of what school um, is, is kind of supposed to help teach you, and more and more that's what we're looking at. Well, and it would seem to me that the more you can build connections between students and local businesses, I mean, we talk a lot about the brain drain, people, leave, students, young people leaving Kansas. It seems like the more that you can establish those ties and links, the more likely uh, young people are maybe to stay in the state. 
and, and pursue their careers uh, in yeah. Kansas. Well, and that is so striking because one of the other things that was a little bit of an eye-opener for me, and I mean, you and I are about the same age, when when part of growing up was you move away, right? You want, you want to get away from home, you want to get away from family, you want to go see something new. One of the things they said over and over is so striking about that community, heavily Hispanic, about, uh, again, again, just 80% of students are in multilingual or English as a second language or immigrant families. But what is so, I guess, striking to me was they talked over and over about family values, people wanting to stay together, wanting to stay in that community. So it's, it's interesting that you have a population of newer and older immigrants who've come to a place mm -hmm. in search of a better life, but kind of having found it there, don't want to leave. One, right. one of the stories that was so striking was uh, they talked about a young woman who'd gotten a, a full scholarship, I don't remember exactly, an, an Ivy League type institution. She ended up staying and studying cosmetology because she didn't want to leave, right. didn't want to leave her family. Uh, now, I'm not saying, you know, they're not saying is that good or bad, that's a value you can have, but it's just so striking of saying these are people, uh, this is a community, these are families that really value those connections. And I think that's part of what the Dodge City, that whole message was about. It's a challenge to bring people to Western Kansas, but if you've got a population there that's willing to stay, then if you can raise their skills, even then they talk about just the challenge of, of again, going somewhere else in the state for four-year college and coming back. Many will because they want to come back. It can even be that matter of saying, are you willing to, to, uh, to make that step in the first place? Mm -hmm. But that whole sense of saying, we need, we need to improve uh, the, the education levels of our community, um, but there'll be a real payoff. And in that case, it's very clear, both to that community and to the state of Kansas, that that, that seems likely to happen. Well, it's an amazing story. It's, it's kind of, uh, it, it's just great to hear what's going on in Dodge City. Uh, these increases in the post-secondary rate are going on in other districts, right. as you know, and, and you're going to be visiting some of those. The Mark's story is on our website, and if you want to read more about that, uh, it, it provides more in depth about uh, what's going on there. And uh, we're going to be, Mark is going to be writing stories about other districts that are having similar types of increase. So thank you for bringing this to our attention, and I think it's something all Kansans can uh, celebrate in and, and uh, appreciate. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, again, uh, if, you, if you've got a good story to tell, let me know. I'll, I'll, if, I, if, I, if I don't approach you, I'm happy to come see what's going on, because part of what we want to do is talk about the positive things that were happening, but I think also very clear, let's talk about what's working so we can find ways to replicate that. and it also also it presents uh what challenges are out there and there are many and uh as as are experienced in every state but i think uh, in kansas uh, i believe that the, the the state board is taking a, a little different tack than most states and uh i it, it's a very interesting and uh, i think it it represents a very collaborative approach to working with other uh, parts of our society. Absolutely, and that, that was very much on display in Dodge City. Well, thank you.